Hello, I'm Brent Ferris, and in this video we're going to go over garbage collection and how we can see it inside of the uh, profiler and how garbage is actually created. So, I'm going to go over into our script, and uh, I've blinked out everything, and we're not using all that old stuff. What we're going to do is, first we're going to create some things that don't make garbage, and then we're going to create some things that do make garbage. So let's make an int uh, something equals 4, and then let's make a bool other equals 5. Five, sorry, true. Um, so here's two things that we're going to create, and if we uh, if we look at it, every update we're going to create these two things for no reason, and then we're going to leave. So these things are going to be created and then destroyed, uh, whenever this function is called. So let's hit play, and these are ones that are not going to create any garbage. So uh, now let's just pause here and let's find our guy here. If we can seem to find here it is mono behavior update, test update. Notice there are zero bytes in garbage collection. Okay, so we've created some types and we've uh, and it's not creating any garbage, even though they're being created and, and uh, they lose scope whenever they get uh, whenever we leave update. Now let's create a string, and let's uh, first using str uh, system, and we're going to say string uh, x equals new string. And in order to do a new string, we're going to pass in a new char array in here. And H E L L O. So we're going to have hello go into this string X. I know this is a weird way to create a string instead of string X equals whatever. But I want to do this so that you can see new string here and new char array here, which we're not doing here. We're not saying int something equals new int 4. But imagine that this string was your own class. So let's say that you have, um, sorry, system would have been if I want to use like the capital S string. Uh, so you don't actually need system. Um, anyways, uh, so uh, what was I saying? Uh, you can imagine that this is your own class. Let's say that you made it a, you made a class somewhere. It didn't extend mono behavior, so you can create a new of it. Uh, so you went and you created you created it and you did new something. Okay, uh, this new keyword uh, you can imagine it's like C plus plus if you came from there. Um, whenever you're creating an object on the stack versus the heap, uh, we're creating a new object on the heap. So let's go over here. Let's clear out this profile, let's hit play, and let's stop anywhere on this guy. We have our behavior update here, but notice it's now using 344 bytes. And we can see in test update, we can open that up, and notice that uh, the runtime helpers is zero bytes, but the string here, the stream constructor, that's what CTOR is, is taking up 144 bytes. Um, so if we drill down, we can see where it's being uh, where it's being used. So right here, internal allocate string, that's where we're allocating 144 bytes. Um, and you may wonder why, uh, if we're here in this test update, why it has 344 bytes, but this string constructor only is 144. That's because uh, inside of the update, we're actually creating some new things other than the string. We're newing up this character array. And so we're creating garbage collection other than inside of this constructor by itself. And that's where the other uh, the other bytes go. So whenever you see, like, you open it up and there's bytes here, that means some things, so, some of your garbage collection is actually being used here and not inside of uh, this function. This is all that this function is using. So if we scrub through this, we can see that we're using 144 bytes over and over and over and over again. We just constantly keep using it. Uh, it's being garbage collected every single update, which is not very good and is super wasteful. Since this is going to be the same thing all the time, something I can do uh, will, is that I can put it, uh, say, up here inside of the scope of the class. I can say string x equals uh, nothing to start, and then I can assign x down here, right? And this doesn't clean up the garbage collection because we're calling new all the time. But I can say string x is null and then say if x is uh, equal to null, then create a new string of it. And this variable inside of this class, this, uh, this scope to variable, this member variable, is actually going to hold this value uh, for the lifespan of the object 
uh, that exists. So let's uh, go over here and let's stop playing. Let's, let's clear it out our profiler. Let's hit play and let's immediately pause. Now uh, it's probably going to be kind of hard to find what we're looking for in here because I don't know uh, which one of these frames it created on, probably the first one. Uh, yes, here it is, 344 bytes, test update. But if we go to any of the others, you'll notice that it's zero bytes because we've already allocated the string. And we're going to remove a few of these scripts so that we only have one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and see that the heap size is changing on this call. So I'm going to say um, profiler, which gives you access to profile, and you can do all kinds of stuff, log files, begin samples, add frames from file, uh, so on and so forth. What we want to look at is the used heap size. So I'm going to debug log this, debug.log, and I'm going to copy this and paste it after this line. So I'm going to print the used heap size before and after the line. So let's go back uh, and hit play. And we can stop it because all we care about are these logs. Notice that we went from this number ending in 904 to this number ending in 920. So you can see that between those two lines, our heap is actually changing in size. As I was telling you, it's allocating memory on the heap. So uh, one question that we did not address is why is this new call actually allocating and deallocating memory with uh, with garbage collection? However, these are not, even though we're assigning those variables and values. Uh, why aren't these guys, and why is this guy? So let's first click on string and press F12. And when we do that, we can see that the string is type class. And classes are one type of structure that we have uh, whenever we're creating our data types inside of uh, C Sharp. And those classes, whenever we new them up, that memory uh, goes on the heap. So there's uh, two types of memory. We have stack and heap. So we've learned a little bit about the heap and how we stick all of that on the heap. Now let's think about the stack. These two values actually go on the stack, which is faster memory. Uh, the, stack, the stack memory is actually faster than the heap memory. Um, however, uh, the stack memory is, is uh, smaller. So if we go over here to int and we go F12, we can see that this int is actually a struct. It is not class. So structures are special. Uh, if you've ever used a struct instead of a class, um, especially in C++, they're, they're vastly different than what we have in C Sharp. Um, in C Sharp, we can actually make functions in structs and stuff. Uh, in C++, they're basically just data holders. Um, we use them for constants and a bunch of stuff. So. Um, this data type is a struct, and you can think of a struct going onto the stack. Let's look at a couple of other things. Uh, vector3, for example, is going to be a struct. So here it is. It's a struct instead of unity, which means that it's incredibly fast compared to, say, like this new string, which is going to be on uh, a class type. And also, when you're creating them, you can see the data type by the icon over here on the left. Notice these two square boxes. That means it's a struct versus if I went to a uh, new string, uh, well, maybe that's not a good example. Let's say new test, because test is a class. And this is what the, what the class looks like. You have kind of these yellow boxes with the lines pointing to each other. Um, so those are, uh, those are the two differences and how you can see the difference directly whenever you're typing uh, inside of the editor or inside of uh, Visual Studio or whatever IDE you're using. So uh, we've just seen how we've reduced the garbage collection by moving this uh, creation of this object onto a, a type of object that's living for a long time. This is living for the length of time that this test class is living. Once we destroy the camera in this example, because that's what the test script is attached to, once we destroy the camera, then this x value will be garbage collected and, uh, and it'll, it'll be gone forever. So the garbage collection we do see is happening here on this new. So I hope that kind of uh, explained out the at least in basic uh, what garbage collection is and how we can optimize it. Now, um, whenever I run my script, it is way more performant because it's only calling that garbage collection once. And if we look at it over here, 
if we can find it, here we go, the behavior update. It's using 15 kilobytes of uh, garbage collection. And we go somewhere else. It's only using zero. Notice the time in milliseconds here is 0, 0.00. And the time in milliseconds here is almost 10 milliseconds. So it's a huge amount of difference. And the only uh, real difference that we have here is our garbage collection inside of that test update. Um, and it's also, yeah, it's just that test update. So if we look at it, the time will remain in zero milliseconds, but for that first one, it's really long. So you want to reduce the garbage collection as much as possible. Um, and, uh, and one thing to keep note is that sometimes this is not a good practice to store it over here on a member variable or a static variable, which lives uh, for, the, for a very long time because sometimes you have limited memory on your device. If you're working on like an old phone or maybe a, a Arduino or something really tiny um, that has a very limited amount of memory, you don't want to stick a bunch of stuff in long-lived memory and not release that memory because the amount, if you take up a memory for one thing, that means that you have that much less memory for the remainder of your program. So uh, keep that in mind. So this has been a long enough video. Uh, I hope you liked it, and uh, I think in the, I think I'll have a couple more videos on the profiler uh, coming up. Just some uh, tips and trips, trips, tricks. Um, so I'll see you in those videos. Thanks for watching.